According to the Quran, Jesus was a devout Muslim who didn't die on the cross, didn't rise from the dead, and certainly didn't claim to be the divine Son of God. But our earliest records of Jesus' life thoroughly contradict these Islamic claims. Since the Jesus of history is so incredibly different from the Jesus of Islam, Muslims are forced to claim that history has been altered. Who corrupted our view of Jesus? The most common Muslim answer is Paul. Before we point a finger at Paul, however, there are 10 facts we should keep in mind. First, Paul was a brilliant scholar who knew the Old Testament backwards and forwards. The 20th century atheist philosopher Antony Flew said that Paul obviously possessed a first-class philosophical mind. When the Roman governor Festus objected to Paul's claims, he couldn't say, Paul, you're stupid. He could only say, Paul, your great learning is driving you mad. Now, being a brilliant scholar doesn't make you right, but since Jesus claimed to fulfill Old Testament prophecy, knowing the contents of the Old Testament and being able to carefully evaluate those contents certainly helps. Second, Paul was a contemporary of Jesus who knew all of the relevant languages for examining Jesus' teachings. If you want reliable information about a person, it's pretty helpful to be a member of the person's own generation, to be in the same country, and to speak the original languages. So Paul was in the perfect position to learn as much as he wanted about Jesus. Third, Paul received revelations from Jesus himself. Paul didn't just decide to be an apostle one day. He was chosen by Jesus Christ, who appeared to him, changing Paul's life forever. Why would Jesus personally select someone who was going to corrupt his message? Fourth, Paul tested his revelations. Paul was smart enough to know that lots of people think they're getting revelations from God when they really aren't. So after receiving revelations and preaching the gospel, he went to Jerusalem and submitted his gospel to the original apostles of Jesus to make sure it lined up with the gospel of Jesus. Paul's message was confirmed by Jesus' apostles. Fifth, as a Pharisee, Paul was obsessed with preserving and passing on authoritative tradition. Paul describes his life as a Pharisee by saying, I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen, being more extremely zealous for my ancestral traditions. Paul's obsession with tradition doesn't go away when he becomes a Christian. He just changes the source of authority. As a Pharisee, he would have passed on traditions he obtained from respected rabbis. As a Christian, he passed on traditions he obtained from Jesus' apostles. So the idea that Paul, who had been trained all his life to carefully and zealously preserve and pass on authoritative tradition, the idea that he's somehow reinventing Christianity out of his own head with no respect for what Jesus and his apostles actually taught goes against everything we know about Paul and his background. Sixth, history supports Paul's view of Jesus wherever we can test his claims. Even if we take a critical approach to the history of Jesus, there are certain facts we can establish. For instance, Jesus viewed himself as bringing about the kingdom of God. Jesus viewed himself as the Messiah. Jesus viewed himself as the Son of God. Jesus died by crucifixion. Jesus' followers were convinced that he had appeared to them, risen from the dead. These are the kinds of things we learn about Jesus through historical investigation, and they're exactly the kinds of things Paul says about Jesus. Seventh, Paul endured vicious persecution for his message and never backed down. Muslims like to point out that Muhammad was persecuted in Mecca, and this is true. But the persecution Muhammad endured was like a vacation in Hawaii compared to the lashings and imprisonments and shipwrecks and stoning and beheading that Paul went through. The reason this is important is that the more you're persecuted, the more reason you have to stop and think, was that really a revelation from God that I received? I need to be sure because it's costing me a lot. Paul's patient endurance in the face of torture and death shows that his experiences of the risen Jesus must have been thoroughly convincing. Eighth, the Apostle Paul performed numerous miracles during his missionary journeys, including healing a man who was disabled since birth and even raising a young man named Eutychus from the dead. Paul lived such a miraculous life that people would touch him with a cloth, take the cloth to a sick person, and the sick person would be healed. Paul became so famous for casting out demons that exorcists would try to cast out demons by saying, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Why would God give Paul this kind of power if Paul was corrupting Christianity? Ninth, Paul lived a morally exemplary life. Before he was a Christian, he was blameless according to the Jewish law. 
That doesn't mean that he was sinless. It means that no one could point a finger at him for violating the commands of the Torah. The only thing we would condemn him for was using violence to attempt to destroy the Christian church. But that was before he was a Christian. After his conversion, Paul completely renounced violence and promoted love as the key Christian virtue. So if we know that Paul was an extremely moral and pious person, what sense does it make to accuse him of being a wicked deceiver? Tenth, and this one is specifically for our Muslim friends, Allah confirms the reliability of Paul. In chapter 61, verse 14 of the Quran, Allah says that he aided the true followers of Jesus until they became uppermost over those who rejected Jesus. But the followers of Jesus who became uppermost were Christians who believed in the message of the Apostle Paul. So when Muslims claim that Paul was a false teacher, they're claiming that Allah helped the wrong Christians. Putting all of this together, we see that Paul is as reliable as a witness can possibly be. He's intellectually reliable, morally reliable, and spiritually reliable. Since Muhammad isn't reliable in any of these ways, it's simply absurd to blame Paul for Muhammad's obvious errors about Jesus.